Hello there, this is Dr. Norman Thomas. Welcome to tonight's edition of Power Talk. We have a brand new series lined up for you and you're going to enjoy it and be blessed by it. Let's go to these, these announcements and I'll be right back. We have great news. We have launched the New Life Food Bank. Now you can help us serve our local community and bridge the gap of food insecurities among families right here at home. New Life is currently receiving canned good food items only. Your donations of canned food items will make a difference for so many families affected by the 2020 hurricanes and COVID-19. Learn ways in which you can help today. Call or text us at 337-433-1111 or visit us online at nlcinternational.org and click on Food Bank. We are believing God for the opportunity to start gathering with you again here on Easter Sunday. That's April 4th at 9.30 a.m. on our campus at 3000 East Goche Road. Doctors Norman and Debbie Thomas are planning a special and unique experience for you on that day. The day will include communion, worship, special presentations, and a powerful word of restoration. Social distancing will be in practice for the benefit of your safety and the safety of your family. Children's ministry will not be provided. However, the whole family is invited to join us in the main auditorium. So come on, make a decision to join us for Easter. See, giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE. We want to thank you for your giving. We believe stronger heartedly that your giving makes a difference in the lives of people. If I seem out of breath, I was running, <laughs> trying to get back to the table. <laughs> But uh, your giving makes a difference in the lives of people. We are getting ready this weekend, this is Easter weekend, to do distribution to our community. That's canned goods, that's hot foods. We're gonna be a blessing. And we want you to be a part of that. And so as you give, you are a part of that endeavor. So continue giving. Remain consistent in your giving and continue being a blessing. Father, we thank you for the ability to give and the power of giving that is such a strong foundation in the kingdom of God. We believe in the power of the seed that we sow and we believe that as we sow it, we receive the harvest of that seed sown in Jesus' name, amen. While we are Listening to these announcements, go ahead and process your giving, your tithes, your offering, your partnership gifts. All right? In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, listen to this. God says, let's make man in our image and after our likeness. Imagine that you made in the image of God. When I got revelation of this, it blew my mind because think about it, the word image alone, it means an exact duplicate. It means a precise copy. It means a true mirror reflection of another. This means that you and I have been gifted with a quality that most people have never tapped. We literally have the divine nature of God within us. Especially once you're born again, born anew, now you're operating with a divine quality. 
All right. I finally caught my breath after <laughs> running back to the table. I had to go take care of something technical, and I just wanted to make sure I could get back here to you on time. And who almost didn't make it. But anyway, we're starting a new series tonight, and this series is entitled The Power of Consistency. Well, it's really a question. How's your consistency? How are you doing in being consistent in the things of God? And just in life in general, you know, one thing that is very, very necessary for believers to practice is doing what we say we will do and following through with what we say we will do. Even if we say it to ourselves. Listen, if you can't say to yourself that you're going to do something and follow through with it, how much more difficult is it for you to say and commit to others something and then follow through with it? So it's important, and I'm going to show you in these teachings that we're going to do over the next several weeks on Tuesday nights for Power Talk, how important consistency really is and the production side of consistency as well. It is uh, sometimes forgotten, and I say that in my notes tonight, that it's sometimes forgotten, but it's one of the most powerful spiritual attributes a believer can possess. So tonight, make sure you press that share tag on your Facebook page, on your YouTube page. Make sure you share this page with others so that anybody can be encouraged to beef up their consistency in life, okay? Now, uh, these notes are available to you on our website. If you go to nlcinternational.org, if you go to the media link, the media, media page, go all the way down to the bottom of that page, and you'll find these notes. You can download them to your device. You can print them depending on what situation you're in. Well, let's introduce this new series, okay? How's your consistency? Now, the scripture that we're going to use to build our foundation is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse uh, 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, be steadfast, be immovable, be always abounding in the work of the Lord. Meaning, Always being superior, always excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile, it is never wasted, and it is never to no purpose. So, in other words, your service in the kingdom of God is never wasted. Even if man does not recognize you for what you're doing, you have to know that it's not for man to recognize you necessarily. It's always good when that happens, but that's not why you're doing it. You're not doing it to get man's attention. You're doing it to get God's attention, basically. You're doing it in out of your passion and your desire for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And I'll just say it this way. The only person that is really important that it gets noticed by is God. Because God says, you need to know that your service to the kingdom is never wasted and it never goes to no purpose. That means there are spiritual implications to your service. But that's not what we're really here to talk about tonight. What we're here to talk about tonight is consistency. So yes, consistency in your service to the kingdom of God, for sure. But even narrow, narrowing it down even more, I want to look at this element, this spiritual commodity, I call it, of consistency and the power that it bears. Now let's read our opening paragraph together. It says, consistency or steadfastness, as it is in the King James Bible, it establishes you toward your success. That's what it does. This is applicable on every level. So this is not just spiritual we're talking about. It is spiritual first, but it's also dealing with every aspect of your life. From your life at home, your life at work, your life at school, uh, your life in your professional career, 
or your life in your recreation, your, your, your personal development, and whatever level we're talking, we're talking consistency on every scale. And it goes on, uh, I say here that without this spiritual force of consistency, we would always fall victim to these enemies that, um, I, these enemies that I'm going to describe to you later and never see any degree of progress or success in our lives. In this series, we will learn how to optimize consistency in our lives on every level. Now, let's just skip down all the way to the bottom of your page, the bullet, first bullet point at the bottom of the page. It says this, consistency is a producer. It is a producer. And it produces superior quality. It produces excellent performance. It produces perpetual increase in the production of your work for God. Now, all of that comes right out of that foundational text. We're just expounding on it. Notice what it says. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord so that you will always be superior excelling and doing more than enough in the work of God. So consistency produces. If you will establish consistency in your life, you will find that by being consistent, you will produce superior quality in your life, excellence or excellent performance in your life, and perpetually increase in your production or the producing of the work that you are assigned to do. I guess all I'm trying to say is that sometimes we practice consistency uh, and sometimes it comes across as an obligation. I got to be consistent. I got to follow through. I got to say or I got to do what I say. But I want you to understand this side to consistency. It is a spiritual commodity that builds. It is a spiritual commodity that produces excellency in you superior quality in you and a perpetual increase and abounding in the work that you set your hands to do. You'll find that you will grow and you will increase and you will be enhanced as you practice consistency. Now let's go back up to the top because I have a working definition for this consistency. Number one, it is steadfastness with resoluteness. It is steadfastness with loyalty to what? An idea or an assignment or a cause. It is getting an idea in your mind and, of course, the right idea. Getting an assignment in your heart and capturing a cause with, with your passion and with the passion of your heart and remaining steadfast with resoluteness. In other words, you will not be moved by anything, any circumstance, any person, place, or thing. Nothing's going to draw you back. Number two, number two, it is the ability to make the necessary adjustments while at the same time keep moving forward towards your successful outcome. You know, let's talk adjustments. Many times people adjust, but when people adjust, typically they stop. They stop in their tracks to make adjustments in their life without continuing to move. And what happens sometimes when people do that, they never really regain the momentum they had before they stop to make adjustments. There is a place inside of you that is akin to the nature and the heart of God where you can tweak your walk, your life. You can make the adjustments that are necessary while you keep moving, while you keep moving all at the same time. In other words, there are some things you can continue to do. You don't have to just shut everything down because of an event that occurred in your life or because of a major shift in your life or because of some traumatic event in your life or 
you just, you just don't have to do that. You, you don't want to lose traction. You don't want to lose momentum, especially in those things where you've had trouble building traction and momentum. So keep that going. Even if you have to, uh, if, even if you have to just back off a little bit, but you want to still measure increase every day or every week or every month or every year, maybe you're not at the rate that you were before because of the adjustments that you're making, but you don't want to just halt everything simply because something happened in your life it's demanding some adjustments or some changes that must occur in your life. Don't do that. Find out the places in your life where you can still keep moving forward, where you can keep the motion going, keep the momentum going while making those adjustments all at the same time. All right? And then consistency is the unwavering determination to not be deterred and to not be distracted. You have made up your mind. That's that resoluteness. So there's a lot more to it than just keep going. Yes, keep going, but keep going with a made up mind, keep going with, a, with an attitude of resoluteness, and, and don't make any excuses while you're going to stop or to halt while you're making the necessary adjustments in your life to keep moving in the direction of the desired outcomes for your life. Now, <clears throat> consistency, let's read this first scripture that I have for you. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Okay, well, we just read it, right? Okay, it's the same, let's read it again. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm. Okay, so say with me, I am firm. Come on, say it. Say, I am firm. And say, I am immovable. Say it. Say, I am always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now, you may not feel like you qualify to make these declarations or decrees, but in faith, this is what we do. We speak in agreement with God. That's what we're doing right now. Speaking in agreement with the word of God over our lives. And if where we are naturally don't measure up to where we're, what we're saying and where we are spiritually, hey, we have the right in Christ to call those things that be not as though they were with full expectation for there to be a natural follow-up of a new spiritual condition. And you create that new spiritual that's that new spiritual condition with your own words. And when you speak words, you create environments and you create atmospheres and you shift and you disrupt current states of atmospheres to to declare what it ought to be. So by you saying what I'm asking you to say, you are shifting things right now in the realm of the spirit, making room for your spirit to manifest this in your natural life. So it, it's, it's just no, it's not a joke to be saying this. It's not, I'm not just saying this just to give you something to say after me. You are creating and you are developing uh, you are retrofitting your spirit to receive a natural manifestation of what you decree. So say it with me. Say, I am firm, I am steadfast. And then say, I am, in, I am immovable. And say, I am always abounding in the work of the Lord. All right, so second bullet point, it says, consistency gives us reason to never quit. It gives us reason to never retreat from attention to the task at hand. It keeps us focus forward. It keeps your focus forward. Your focus will remain forward when you apply and embrace this spiritual commodity of consistency. It allows you to remain fixed on the promise that lies ahead. Now, in just a minute, we're going to go in the scriptures and find a practical application. You can see that on your handout as we move down this lesson. But 
Let's just look at one in, say, one that would happen in, in, in our lives. You know, so this is March, right? We're almost in the month of April, depending on when you're watching this, you'll just know that. And we're almost in the month of April. And the, 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 the statistics will say that people tend to make New Year's resolutions. Remember the word resolute in this thing? that they will make New Year's resolutions around last of December, the beginning of January of the new year. But by the end of March, what they have resolved to do has been watered down or cast to the side. They can't even remember what they said they would do for the new year in most cases, or in some cases. Now, but, but what I want to see what I want to see, I want to see you analyze and evaluate your own life. In other words, where are you right now? Where are you in that regard? Are you still on that thing that you said you would set your heart to do? And you know, one of the big ones is, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to start working out every, every other day or so many times a week. Well, the question is, is that where you are right now? Is that still where you are, you, are you standing where you decided you would be standing on January 1, okay? Now, the deal is, is that this happens by practice. In other words, you know as well as I do that when you make a resolve to do something, you have to act immediately as though you're already at the peak of that resolve. You can't say, I'm going to do this in a few days, or in a week, or in two weeks, or in three weeks, I'm going to act this way financially, I'm going to act this way towards my health, or I'm going to act this way spiritually. No, you have to resolve that it is now. And you know, the nature of faith is now. The nature of faith has no, no future and it has no past. The nature of faith is always right now. And so in regards to say an instance of, uh, of a, a health goal, you have to declare that's where you are right now. And just say if you, if you are at you know, 150 pounds and you desire to be 130 pounds, whatever, you know, whatever your goal is, you have to declare yourself 130 right now and, and don't let that scale tell you any different. You decide and you talk to that scale, you tell that scale the way it ought to be until it begins to agree. Now what's happening is that you're feeding your spirit and you're allowing your spirit to get in charge. Once your spirit is in charge, your spirit starts commanding your physical realm and your thoughts and, and ultimately your behavior. And before you know it, you will become aligned with the goal that you have desired. So my thing to you is this, is that you always have to start with consistency now and always act as though you're at the most optimum level of consistency at the very beginning stage. Okay, now let's go to the next session. Consistency, a spiritual commodity, a commodity of development. James chapter 1 verse 4, it says, But let endurance and steadfastness, which is consistency, and patience, which is endurance, which is akin to consistency, let it have full play. In other words, let it play itself out. Allow consistency to play itself out. He said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to work towards this goal. Then do it. Let it play itself out because if you let it play, have its full play, if you let it do a thorough work, then uh, you will become perfectly and fully developed. Do you see that? It says you will become perfectly and fully developed Get this, with no defects, lacking in nothing. 
Now that is powerful. So consistency is a very important but greatly overlooked and very disregarded spiritual commodity of power. People just don't really invest their faith in that power of consistency in their life. Consistency is always in the mix when we use this spiritual force to overcome indecisiveness, to overcome procrastination, to overcome hesitancy. A lot of times we're hesitant because there are fear factors involved. We're hesitant because there are trust issues going on even within yourself and the opportunity at hand. Uh, there is procrastination because you just simply have not practiced enough in terms of being decisive. You just have a hard time making decisions. There's a lot of fear there. When there's, when there's always difficulty trying to make a decision, you, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of fear, and that fear is usually the fear of failure. So these, when you come against these forces, like fear, like hesitancy, uh, like procrastination, or indecisiveness, or wavering back and forth, that, that, that is a big one. When there's this, this vacillation back and forth, I'm gonna do this now, I'm gonna do this now, I'm gonna do this now, I'm gonna, you know, you, there's like, if you find that it's difficult for you to stay with something at least a month, you got a problem. Okay, but you can solve that problem. You have the power within you to solve that problem. If you can't keep a job, if you haven't kept a job, one job, more than a year or two years, let's say two years, there's something going on there that you have to consider. You have to take a look inside and then make a decision. Maybe it's, maybe it's a lack of this spiritual commodity of consistency. You just... Maybe it is that you are afraid to just stay with something long enough because you don't think it'll, it'll last. You don't think good will last long. Maybe you think if, if things are going well for so long, it's bound to crash. So I'm going to bail out before it crashes. Don't do that. See it all the way through. And you'll find out that you have the power to succeed now, especially if your trust is in God. And if you're depending on him and not yourself, his strength and not your strength to come through. Consistency produces high levels of development. It eliminates defects and it abolishes the power of lack in your life. Now that lack could be lack of confidence. It could be a lack of ability. It could be the lack of tangible material that is necessary to reach your goals. But look at this scripture in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 in the ESV translation. I have it here. It says, let us not grow weary in doing good. Can we stop right there for a second? Find that good place. Find that right place. Do you know when you're doing right? Another word for good is right. You know when you're doing good. You know when you're doing right. You know when you are on the right track. Why not just stay there a while? Why jump off of that track? Why deviate from that pattern? Why, why upset things, especially if you know for yourself that you have a history of not sticking it out and not being consistent in one thing long enough? Why, why, why change it? Develop yourself. Uh, use this as an opportunity to grow and to en enhance your staying ability. It will pay great dividends in your life. It will prove you, it will prove to be a good uh, character and a good commodity to possess in your life for the future and for future adversity that is to come. So practice consistency now. Practice loyalty. Let's go back to our working definition on the first page. Practice the ability to be resolute now. Practice being loyal to an idea long enough, to an assignment long enough, to a cause long enough. Practice 
unwavering determination to see a thing through without being deterred and without being distracted. So back to this scripture, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, do not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, if we, you will reap if we do not give up. If you don't give up, you will reap. If you don't give up, you will reap. If you don't give up, you will reap. Now, stay doing good. Keep doing good. Do not grow weary in doing good, the right thing staying on the right path, if you'll stay on the right path, if you'll keep doing good, if you'll keep doing right, you will reap the reward of that right doing. It just will happen. You know why? It's a law. It's a law that God has placed in the earth and that's exactly what will happen for you. Many people just don't, have not practiced this particular um, attribute. And so they move from one thing to the next, from one thing to the next. They try this, nah, I'm going to do something else. Nah, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to do that. There's a lot to be said about listening and hearing and receiving guidance from God and deciding, God's put me on this path. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stay on this path until I receive the outcomes that he promised me on this path or until I know that he is directing me in another way. Consistency. I heard Joyce Meyer say something so powerful one time. Well, she says a lot of powerful things. But I was listening to her one day and she says to her audience, she says, you know, the reason why our ministry has reaped any degree of success that we call success today, she says, I attribute it all to just being consistent. She says, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not smart enough to do this. I'm not smart enough to make all this happen. That's what she said. She says, it's not me it's God in me, it's Christ in me, and she says, it is the power of consistency in my life. She says, so I say to you, she says, if you want success in anything that you believe God has called you to do, then stay consistent with it. I remember when we first started our ministry, uh, you know, I had this conversation with Dr. Debbie. I mean, this was like, three months in. I mean, we started in January and now we're, so this is about four months in and now it's May and it's coming up on Mother's Day, okay? So I said to her, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to give everybody off for Mother's Day. Just let people go enjoy their family and be with their moms. You know what happened? There were people that never came back. You know why? I broke a law. The law that I broke was the law of consistency. And those people never came back. And it was a few of them. And that's something that the Lord showed me and something that I learned. He says, you broke consistency. You can't break consistency in, in, while you're developing and while you're growing in anything. And, and if you want to maintain a momentum, you, can't, you can make adjustments, but you can't break consistency. And many times we break consistency unnecessarily to our detriment. And so tonight, the encouragement, you already know, stay consistent in whatever it is that God has called you to do or for practice in whatever it is that you believe is good to do for your, for your life right now. And then as you hear God speak to you and give you direction for your life, then you'll, you will have practiced your consistency to a level that where you can now be loyal to that idea or that assignment that God has given you. So let's read Galatians 6, 9 again. It says, let us not grow weary in good doing and doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And then finally, 
tonight, let's look at a practical application, okay? Now let's read this. Uh, this is found in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and it's five verses, and so we're going to read it together. It says, And Jesus told them a parable, so this is a parable, to the effect, here's the, the lesson that we're supposed to learn, to the effect that they ought to always pray and not turn coward. Always pray and not faint, not lose heart, and not give up. I always have to, to add when we see the word pray, we're talking about decreeing the word of God, okay? So we're talking about, and that's according to 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. You look that up. 1 John 5, 14, 15. So when you, when you go and look that up later, you'll find that prayer is agreeing with God. That's what prayer is. It's not just telling God all about your problems. And you could do that. It's not just being all emotional and, and just telling God everything, just when you want to get off your chest. You can do that. You can talk to God about anything. But prayer is something different. Prayer is to decree and to declare God's word over your situation, over your circumstances, over the earth. Over whatever it is God is calling you to move upon spiritually to impact. You do it through prayer. That's why intercession is important. That's another form of prayer. That's why Praise and thanksgiving is important. That is another form of prayer. We pray to change things. We don't pray to feel better, but you do feel better when you pray, but that's not the objective of prayer. The objective of prayer is to transform your situation, your circumstances. That's, that's why we pray, for things to make things better. We pray, right? That's... So when you study this out, that's what you'll find the objective of prayer is. Just go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 and on your study time and, and look that up. And then you can also read it in the Amplified Classic Translation. So go back to this scripture. He says, men ought to always pray. And here's what I insert. Decree my word over your situations in life and don't give up, don't faint, and don't lose heart, okay? So that means that if I decree something and it doesn't look like it's getting better, I am not quitting, I am not fainting, I am not giving up on that because what I see is not the end. What I say is the end. And I have to keep saying it and be consistent with decreeing it until the outcomes manifest. So he said in a certain city there was a judge who neither reverenced or feared God nor respected or considered man. Okay, this, this. So, and there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him, kept coming coming to him. Now modernize this analogy, okay? And see this as a lady going to court every Monday morning. Just say, just every week she's back before the judge and she has a, re a request, she has a petition for the court and every week she gets denied her request and the judge sends her out of the room. And then every Monday morning here she is again, back again in front of the judge. And so she kept coming to him and she kept saying this was her petition protect me defend me give me justice against my enemies my adversary for at time he would not in other words he kept rejecting her but later she said to him no later he said to himself even though I have no reverence I have no fear for God I don't respect this woman because I have no consideration for man but because this woman continues to bother me, I will defend her, I will protect her, and I will avenge her, lest she give me intolerable annoyance and wear me out by her consistency, her continual coming. 
or at the last, she come and rail on me or assault me or even strangle me. So now he's even projecting out, you know, maybe she'll just lose it and just, you know, <laughs> and attack me. So let me just go ahead and give her what she asked for. Now, suppose that woman would have turned around that first Monday morning and just said, well, I went to court. What else can I do? I stood before the judge. He said no. And the judge's word is final, right? Wrong. God's word is final. And obviously, God kept saying to her, go back. And that's so important. What is God saying? What is God saying? Not what you saying, what is God saying? And, and, and listen, if you be still long enough and stop fretting and stop being filled with anxiety, you'll hear God and it'll be a clear, distinct voice from your own, okay? So what is God saying? And she was operating by what God was saying and therefore she remained consistent and she kept going back and I'm sure she did it with respect and she did it within the basis of her rights, and she kept going back. Now, I have here this woman practically applied consistency by not turning coward, by not losing heart, meaning becoming discouraged, meaning just being depressed about the whole thing because every time she goes, she's denied. She didn't faint or she did not give up, even though she had every natural reason to quit. This woman had every legitimate reason in the book to never go back and petition the court again, but she kept going back. She never received no as an answer. Her consistency broke through the barricade of political and judicial power. I put that there because I want you to understand the power that consistency carries. That even these entities that we think are so powerful and so strong, no, what's more powerful is he that is within you and what it is that he is instructing you to do. And you don't need to act out of your own ability or your own strength. You simply rest in the ability and the strength of God and follow his guidance and follow his instruction. And you will come out on top just like this woman did in this parable. And in this parable, we find that her consistency rewarded her with the desires of her heart without it being compromised in any way. In other words, she didn't get half of what she requested. <laughs> she didn't get just a portion of what she requested. She got everything she requested. So now, how about you? Do you need to practice a little bit more consistency in your life? In other words, you know, some of you already, some things God has told you to do. Just go ahead and step out there and do it and be consistent in it. Just be consistent in it. You know, during these times of COVID-19 and, and in Louisiana, all the hurricanes that we experienced in the last season, the last year, not season, the last year, there were so many reasons that we had to legitimately put things on pause and to just stop teaching the word and just, just you know, Holy Spirit says, you may not be able to meet in that building because of whatever condition or whatever reason, but you have no excuse to stop teaching the word. You have access to technology. You have access to equipment. You, you and, 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 I'm, and I'm enhancing that equipment and I'm giving you more. You have no reason to back down, to back off in any way. As a matter of fact, go stronger. And God challenged me in the onset of these hurricanes, if you got to put your phone in front of you in a hotel room, you better do it and stay consistent. You see, most of what we do in life is, is, plant, is we're planting seed. The things we say that, that blesses and empowers others, it's seed that we're planting. The, the kindness 
gestures of kindness that we perform in the earth and toward others and things that God lays on our heart to do, that's seed. Serving in the kingdom of God in whatever way, whatever how small you think it might be or how large you think it might be, it really only amounts to a seed. But the seed is so powerful. The seed is so great because as a friend of mine said the other day, it's, it's really what's about inside that seed that determines what happens when that seed grows up. You know, I, I was, uh, one of the things that I wanted to say during the giving time was, is that when we give, we have to be like Matthew 4, 32. It says, when that seed is sown, when that financial gift is planted in the work of God, it grows up. Not only does it grow up, it becomes great. And not only does it become great, it shoots out branches. That means it develops, it becomes abundant, and it makes provision. And so that's what consistency does. And that's what the Lord was ministering to me during the tough times and the toughest moments of all of what was going on. He says, be, be consistent, stay consistent, teach the word. If you got to put a camera up in front of you in a hotel room, do it. Because you cannot afford to not plant that seed of consistency because of what's coming in your future. You need the harvest of the seed you're sowing right now for what's coming down the road. And that is what motivated me and provided me with the, uh, the encouragement and the power and the fortitude that we needed to remain focused on the word and teaching and delivering the word. I tell you, I believe the harvest, we've experienced some of it already. I mean, I just finished a online seminar, uh, online conference, whatever you want to call it, with our School of Faith students in Belgium. And it was just an amazing event. It was an, it was an awesome time to see their desire and to see their eagerness to learn and to grow and to hear their testimonies uh, as it was translated to me uh, f uh, from Dutch to English of how they're growing and how God has, has healed their bodies. And one lady had a heart condition and the doctors thought they would have to do surgery and she applied the word to that. And the doctor says, well, we don't really need to do surgery. You actually, your heartbeat is back up to what it should be. It's back up to normal. So whatever you're doing, keep doing that. Things like that. And how people have been in Christ for 40 years, but it, it wasn't until now through the school of faith that they, their eyes, they said, have been opened. It was like fresh air or like fresh food that they received when they received the word of God. And here I am listening to these testimonies and watching and looking at these students in Belgium on a Zoom virtual Zoom conference. And, and then we've had other conferences in other nations as well. In Brazil, the same thing. So my point to you is that if you will stay consistent with what God tells you to do, there's harvest coming, and that a harvest is designed to impact and to make better your future, which is right around the corner. I hope you've enjoyed this teaching. I have. And we're going to continue and we're going to build on it. And before this is over, you're going to be one consistent believer. I believe that with all my heart. Until next time, this is Dr. Norman Thomas saying, keep, well, thank you for joining me for Power Talk and keep walking by faith. We have great news. We have launched the New Life Food Bank. Now you can help us serve our local community and bridge the gap of food insecurities among families right here at home. New Life is currently receiving canned good food items only. Your donations of canned food items will make a difference for so many families affected by the 2020 hurricanes and COVID-19. Learn ways in which you can help today. Call or text us at 337-337. 433-1111 or visit us online at nlcinternational.org and click on Food Bank. We 
are believing God for the opportunity to start gathering with you again here on Easter Sunday. That's April 4th at 9.30 a.m. on our campus at 3000 East Goche Road. Doctors Norman and Debbie Thomas are planning a special and unique experience for you on that day. The day will include communion, worship, special presentations, and a powerful word of restoration. Social distancing will be in practice for the benefit of your safety and the safety of your family. Children's ministry will not be provided. However, the whole family is invited to join us in the main auditorium. So come on, make a decision to join us for Easter. See, giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE 